If you have a Border Collie, you need to understand that you are dealing with the smartest dog breed in the world, and you have a big responsibility for their training. If you don't train them properly, they will learn things on their own which may or may not be desirable things. With little or no training, they will become a disaster. Only with proper training can you raise good Border Collies. Obedience training builds a foundation for the whole training process. This is very crucial for effective communication with your puppy, which in turn helps you to control your puppy and give her advanced training. In obedience training, they learn to follow your commands and instructions. Obedience training is a must for a smart and active dog like a Border Collie because you want these smart dogs to be obedient to you and follow your instructions. Obedience training starts with some simple and basic commands. There are many, but according to the American Kennel Club, every puppy must learn these five basic commands. Come, heal, sit, down, and stay. Border Collies are extremely intelligent, and they can learn up to 200 commands. So apart from these basic commands, you can also teach them many advanced commands. You can send your puppy to a kindergarten or obedience class. These training classes are very helpful for young puppies. It gives them basic training and also provides an opportunity for socialization with dogs of all sizes and breeds. As you know, Border Collies are very smart, and sometimes owners are not able to properly train them because they may literally outsmart you. This is why it is very beneficial to enroll them in a training class. These classes also give you an opportunity to learn from professional trainers about how to train these smart dogs. Each training school has different requirements. Some start with the enrolling process when the puppy is 8 to 10 weeks old. Give your puppy her mandatory vaccinations before letting her mix with other dogs. If you are struggling with any behavioral issue, like herding behavior, you can hire a qualified trainer or behaviorist for private lessons. The American Kennel Club also offers puppy training programs like Star Puppy and Canine Good Citizen programs. You need to be gentle with your puppy and train her carefully. Don't make training like a challenging activity for them. Instead, you should make it an enjoyable and fun exercise for them. An earlier start is essential because Border Collies learn faster, and if you don't train them the right way, they may learn undesired behaviors. So you need to start training when your puppy is around 8 to 10 weeks old. Because of their high intelligence, Border Collies can learn new commands in less than 5 repetitions. While teaching commands, break them down into simple steps and use hand gestures to make them understand more easily. Reward-based training in the form of praise and treats will help a lot in the training process. Use short and clear commands and don't change the wording of the commands. Besides these basic obedience training, Border Collies are champions in different dog sports like agility, fetch, and tracking. They also love their favorite sport, which is herding or sheepdog trials. Start potty training from the very first day of bringing them home. Young puppies are already in the learning phase, and if you start training early on, it will be a lot easier to train them. If you start late, they will already develop bad habits, which will be harder to break. However, the minimum age for training is 8 weeks old. If your puppy is less than 8 weeks old, you should not train her because they cannot comprehend properly. This is the basic principle of the potty training process and is so crucial that even before bringing home a puppy, you need to prepare a dedicated bathroom spot for her. Once you bring home a puppy, she is in a new environment and you have a perfect opportunity to establish firm boundaries from day one, which she will consider a normal part of life here. The location of the potty spot should be suitable for your puppy. Border Collies naturally prefer an outdoor space. It should be easily accessible and away from all distractions. The designated spot should be a suitable location for every weather and properly covered from extreme weather conditions like sun, rain, and snow. The spot should not be close to a path, as puppies don't want to be disturbed while doing their business. Just like a toddler, a newborn puppy does not have any idea that relieving inside is an undesirable thing. So in the beginning, you need to make it clear to them that there is a dedicated spot for the bathroom and they cannot eliminate it everywhere. Border Collies are smart and they will soon pick it up. Changing the spot frequently will make her confused. Give them rewards whenever they go to the designated spot. Establishing a constant routine is going to be very helpful for you and your dog. 
you need to make a comprehensive daily schedule for sleeping, feeding, playtime, nap time, and potty breaks. Border Collies thrive on a daily routine and they will soon get used to it. This daily schedule ensures little to no potty accidents inside the house because it helps both of you predict the potty timings. In terms of building a constant routine, scheduled timings of meals help you a lot. If your puppy has meals and snacks at the scheduled times, they will most probably eliminate them at scheduled times, which means you can easily predict when they have to go potty. There are certain times and occasions when they usually feel an urge for the bathroom. Take them out first thing in the morning and last thing before bed. They also feel an urge 10 to 15 minutes after eating or drinking. You should give them a potty break before leaving them alone in the crate and after a playing session. Young puppies need more potty breaks than adult dogs. They may need potty breaks every hour or two depending upon their age. Puppies also need potty breaks during the night. When nature calls and a puppy feels an urge, she will give you some warning signs that she needs to be taken to the bathroom. Keep an eye out for certain gestures and behaviors, which will be shown around their regular potty timings. These signs could be verbal, physical, or a combination of both. A puppy will give you some key signals, like turning around in circles or sniffing the floor, which means she is most probably finding an old spot of the bathroom. Squatting or lifting a leg are very late signals, which means she is about to go potty and needs to be taken to the potty spot. Sometimes they whine, whimper, or bark at you and the door because they have an urge for the bathroom. Keep them under supervision, especially around their regular potty timings, and as soon as they give a hint, take them to the bathroom. Indoor accidents will happen a couple of times, and they are inevitable until she is fully trained. These potty accidents are normal, especially in the beginning of the training process. There are two main reasons for potty accidents. First, potty accidents happen because of their lack of understanding, as they have not completely grasped the concept of a dedicated potty spot. Second, young puppies have very small bladders and they develop control of bladders over time, which could take up to four months. So they might have accidents because of loose control of their bladders, and sometimes these indoor accidents might happen because of some medical condition like a bladder infection or diarrhea. The complete elimination of indoor accidents is an indication that your puppy has been fully potty trained. To reduce indoor accidents, give them more potty breaks. You don't need to normalize potty accidents inside the house. So when you catch your puppy indoors, interrupt the process and redirect her to the designated spot. Scolding or punishing your puppy is not only a cruel practice, but also yields counterproductive results. Your puppy may wrongly associate the punishment and will be scared to go potty in front of you. When an accident happens, clean the odor and mess completely without leaving any trace of them. An inadequate cleaning will draw a puppy back to the same spot. It is because puppies mark a territory by urinating there, and they often return to the same spot. Just removing the mess will not serve the purpose because odor and enzymes still attract the puppy to the same spot. Therefore, it is recommended to use an enzymatic cleaner that removes the stain, odor, and enzymes. The recommended and preferred option is to use an outdoor spot for the bathroom. However, puppy pads could be used in certain conditions, like if you are living in an apartment or if it is raining or snowing outside. These internal arrangements are also used in some other conditions, like when your dog is sick, injured, or had a surgery. However, indoor arrangements may work for small dogs, but are not a good option for border collies. You should avoid indoor arrangements unless there is a need for them. As mentioned earlier, the preferred and recommended option is an outdoor spot. Border collies are very active and energetic dogs. They spend most of their time outdoors, so they naturally want an outdoor spot for the bathroom. According to the American Kennel Club, Crates are an important puppy house training tool that will make your life easier. So the crate is basically used as a tool for potty training a puppy. Dogs have an inherent desire to keep their den clean because it's their sleeping area. So if you use a crate as their sleeping area, they will try to keep it clean at every cost. That means they will not relieve themselves inside the crate. Instead, they will hold it and then go to the designated spot. So the crate ultimately helps them in controlling their bladder, holding it, and then going to the designated bathroom spot. Thus, crate works as an effective and proven method for potty training a puppy. It is very convenient if your puppy goes to the bathroom on command. The command could be a word or phrase like bathroom, do business, etc. Use the same word all the time and don't change it. 
To determine their holding ability, we use a general formula of months to hours. According to the Humane Society of the United States, a puppy can control their bladder one hour for every month of age. The American Kennel Club also recommends this general formula of months to hours. However, it also says that timings could be different for each puppy, and there is an upper limit of nine months to a year, which is a long time to hold it. So the question, how long a puppy can hold it, depends upon their age. You can use this generic formula of months to hours. However, you should give them frequent potty breaks and should not strictly apply this rule because there are some additional factors that can influence their potty timings. Young puppies have small bladders and they need a few months to get control of their bladders. So it is recommended to give them more potty breaks and don't force them to hold it for a long time because that could cause bladder infections or urinary tract issues. Potty training a Border Collie is easier than other breeds, thanks to their high intelligence. They will take two to three weeks to learn the basics, and then will give you some good results. However, complete potty training could take a few months. This time duration could be different for different puppies, because each one has its own personality and training experiences. So the training process may take longer in some cases, which is a completely normal thing. Consistency is the main requirement. The use of proper training techniques is also mandatory and with their high intelligence, Border Collies will surprise you with the results. Before you learn about crate training, you need to know, is it required or not? According to the American Kennel Club, crate training is very important for dogs of all ages. It provides a shelter for your dog and gives them a sense of security and safety. It is an essential part of housebreaking puppies and has been recommended by vets, trainers, and breeders. The Humane Society of the United States considers it an important tool for preventing bad behaviors and for house training. It is a comfortable, quiet, and safe place and is also helpful for transporting a dog. However, it should not be used incorrectly. A crate is a tool that has to be used correctly. Regardless of all of its benefits, it is still a choice and not a mandatory thing. A crate works as a safe haven and sanctuary for your dog. It is a place to keep your dog whenever they are sick, injured, or recovering from a surgery. Whenever you have to go outside for a short time, you can keep them in the crate and thus prevent them from making a mess inside the house. According to the American Kennel Club, crate ranks high as a potty training tool. The reason behind this is that dogs don't soil their sleeping area, so they naturally want to keep the crate clean and go to the designated bathroom spot. A crate is a great blessing in travel. It is much easier to transport your dog in a crate, and they remain safe and less anxious inside the crate. If you are traveling by air, many airlines demand you put your dog in an IATA-approved crate. The hotels also want your puppy inside a crate. As the crate is their den and personal bedroom, you need to make it an appealing and comfortable place for your puppy. And the essential thing that will have more impact on them is their bedding space. You can provide a soft pillow or blanket, but the problem is that puppies might chew on them or rip them apart. The preferred option is to use a dog bed. These beds and mats are versatile. They are non-chewable, non-allergenic, and easy to clean. There are a lot of options in the market. You can buy beds according to the age and requirements of your dog. For example, a puppy will need a chew-proof bed while an older dog will prefer a soft bed which prevents orthopedic problems. Toys and treats are appealing for puppies, and make sure the crate has a lot of them. Provide them with some interactive toys, like chew and puzzle toys. You can use some food puzzle toys or a long toy which is filled with a delicious treat. These toys and treats will help to keep them entertained and busy while they are left alone in the crate. The overall environment of the crate should give a den-like feeling. If you have a wire crate, you can cover the top and three sides with a sheet to create enough darkness for their privacy and nap timings. There should also be an adequate amount of sunlight, ventilation, and a view of the outside. A puppy should not be wearing collars or tags inside the crate, as those could get stuck in the crate and potentially harm them. Additionally, you want to install a dog camera around the crate, as you can access it remotely and see how your puppy is doing inside the crate. While introducing a puppy to the crate for the first time, you need to use the methodology of positive reinforcement, that is, praise and treats. Use a happy and encouraging voice and lure them inside the crate with treats and toys. 
In the beginning, the crate training may be a little bit stressful and challenging for both of you. Even before formally introducing and keeping them inside, give them a choice to become familiar with the crate. Let them sniff it and explore the comfortable environment of the inside. If she likes it, she will voluntarily go inside and sleep there. Another main aspect is to introduce everything slowly and gradually. Start by leaving them in the crate for short intervals and then gradually increase the time period. In the same way, don't close the door in the first few attempts because they will panic and feel trapped. You can start closing the door after a few attempts. It is recommended to introduce them to the crate when they are tired, like after a playing session, because a tired puppy would want to take a nap in the comfortable bedding of the crate. But if she is in an active mood, she will not stay inside. In the beginning, when you leave them alone in the crate, they may start crying, whining, or barking because they want you to get them out of the crate. These are normal behaviors in the beginning, and you will have to ignore them with a heavy heart, because if a puppy learns that whining can take her out of the crate, she will use that all the time. However, if whining continues for a few minutes, you should check on them because there may be some other reason for that. A positive image of the crate is very beneficial because once your puppy understands that a crate is a comfortable place, she would love the place and happily go inside. So it is advised to take a few steps in the beginning. The crate should only be used as their den and sleeping area and not for disciplining them. The interior of the crate should be decorated properly with a comfortable bed, toys, and treats. Give them a chance to hang out freely in the crate, that is, enter and exit on their own will. It is more beneficial to give them meals inside the crate. Keep them in the crate for only the required time. And to make them more familiar with the crate, you can play a fetch game that involves going inside the crate. Besides these, there are a few things which will highly disturb the training process. You should never use the crate for punishment or to discipline them. Introduce them properly and do not push them inside the crate. Do not use a crate of the wrong size and type. Do not keep them in the crate for a long time. Otherwise, they will hate the crate and consider it a lonely place. These verbal cues are very helpful. You need to train them to enter and exit the crate on a command. This could be words like kennel, crate, etc. You can use separate words for going inside and outside of the crate. Use the same command all the time without changing it. The crate should be placed at a convenient location. Sometimes the training process is disturbed only because the dog hates the location of the crate. Border Collies are very social and they naturally want to be around their humans. During the daytime, keep the crate in an area where they can see you and other family members. This could be a family room, kitchen, or your bedroom. At night, keep the crate close to you, especially during the first few weeks because puppies may need to go to the bathroom. Once they become mature and comfortable, you can shift the crate to another location. The most important thing about the crate location is that it should not be kept in an abandoned or lonely area. A dog needs to feel the vibe of a family. Do not keep the crate in abandoned places like a backyard, basement, or outdoors. It should not be close to dangerous items like fire, electrical wires, etc. You need a crate that is compatible with your dog's size. It should have a correct size that fits your dog perfectly. If it is too large, a dog might be tempted to use its one corner for the bathroom and another for sleep, which will not serve the purpose of crate training. So the general rule of thumb is that the crate should be spacious enough for them to stand up and stretch out freely without hitting the crate. Border Collie is a medium-sized breed and you need a medium-sized crate for them. You need to choose a crate for their adult size because puppies grow constantly until they reach adulthood and you can use dividers or separation panels to accommodate their growing size. You will find many crates in the market according to their size, type, and purpose. Wire mesh crates are more convenient for home usage. They are durable, portable, and collapsible. Some of them have double doors, others have removable dividers. Wooden crates are also the best option for home usage. They are fancy and often used to match home furniture, in case you don't like the aesthetics of a wire crate. Crates that are made from plastic or fabric material are considered travel crates because they are mainly used for traveling purposes. They are lightweight and portable. However, they are relatively soft and are more susceptible to chewing and scratching. These plastic and fabric crates are also approved by the airlines and they are commonly known as flight kennels. Border Collies are athletic dogs and you need to keep them in the crate for as little as possible and only for the required time. According to the Humane Society of the United States, 
puppies under six months of age should not stay in a crate for more than three or four hours at a time. Border Collies are hyperactive dogs. They were supposed to herd all day and they still have that stamina and energy. They need constant mental and physical stimulation. In fact, Border Collies are probably the least suitable dogs for a crate, and that is why it is advised to keep them in a crate only on certain occasions. First, when your dog has to sleep or take a nap, and second, when you have to go outside for a short time. However, if you or your family is around, there is absolutely no need to put your dog in a crate. A crate should be used humanely and ethically. If you keep these athletic dogs in the crate for an extended period of time, they will develop mental and physical issues. Border Collies are extremely smart, and if a crate is used correctly, they will soon become comfortable with it. Because of their intelligent nature, you will see the results in a week or two. However, the time duration could vary because each dog has a different personality and learning experience. The complete crate training could take around four to six months. You need to be consistent and fully dedicated to the training process. Border Collies were originally bred for herding purposes and they are considered the ultimate herding dogs. Even their name, Collie, means sheepdog, which is taken from Scottish dialect. Border Collies have an innate herding instinct and they were bred and trained for this purpose. It is their default mode and a part of their personality. If you have a farm, ranch, or some livestock, then the Border Collie is an ideal dog and you can make the best use of their herding abilities. However, nowadays, Border Collies are also used as family dogs, and in a family environment, their herding instinct would create a lot of problems. Because of their herding instinct, they are naturally inclined to herd anything that moves. They chase literally every moving object, especially cars, which means they are in danger of being hit by a car. They herd other animals in the house like chickens, ducks, etc. The biggest issue arises when a Border Collie starts herding small children by nipping them at the ankles. Because of these and many other reasons, it is understandable that their herding instinct is least desirable in a family environment and you need to control it. However, you need to be careful and if you have children, you should not leave them unsupervised with these dogs. Certain obedience commands will help a lot in controlling their herding behavior. This could be a simple command of recall, like come. This strategy involves distracting them from herding and directing them to do other tasks. Border Collies show certain behaviors before they start herding, and as soon as you notice them taking a herding position, you can call them towards you and let them do other tasks. If your dog comes to you, give him praise and treats. You can use different basic commands for this purpose, like come, leave it, watch me, etc. You need to grab their attention and constantly interrupt their herding behavior. Border Collies are smart and they will soon learn that it is an undesirable behavior and will repeat it as little as possible. Normally, a herding dog shows a certain behavior or body movement before going to herd something. Among the herding dogs, Border Collies have a unique herding style. They are known for their two trademark herding styles, herding eye, which is an intense eye stare, and crouch position. They may also take an alert body position. Sometimes they bark or focus their attention on the moving object. So whenever you notice these signs, you can predict that they are about to herd and you can interrupt them at the proper time. Herding is an innate instinct of Border Collies. It is their natural behavior and you cannot eliminate it, but you can redirect it towards some positive ways. You can channel their herding instinct to more productive ways by giving them safe alternatives like training, certain games, and proper mental stimulation. If you don't have a farm or livestock, there is no need to worry because there are plenty of dog sports and competitions that could satisfy their innate herding instinct and you don't need a flock of sheep for that. If they have the best use of their high energy, they will be less inclined towards herding. Tri-ball is a great sport that was specifically invented for those herding dogs who don't have the opportunity to herd livestock in real life. In simple words, this sport involves herding large animals across a distance. It is a fun game for herding dogs and helps them stimulate their mind and body. In this sport, a dog is supposed to move eight large balls into a goal, across a distance and in a designated time. A dog is supposed to use their nose, chest, or head to push the ball across the field. 
the dog handler remains on the other side of the goal and may give instructions to the dog in the form of whistles or hand gestures. This is a recent sport invented in Germany in 2003, but official competitions were first started in 2008. Although it is more befitting to herding dogs, all breeds can participate in these competitions. Agility is a great sport for Border Collies, and it is one of their favorite ones. They love this sport and usually excel at its competitions. Agility is a wonderful activity for these herding dogs. It stimulates them physically and mentally. Herding or sheepdog trials are also great competitions for Border Collies, and they were bred for it. In these trails, a dog is supposed to control and move the livestock towards the desired location. Besides these, there are many other sports that can help you in controlling their herding behavior. If you are unable to control their herding behavior and nothing seems to work, you should hire a dog trainer or behaviorist who specializes in controlling herding instincts of dogs. You cannot blame a dog for its innate nature and behavior. Border Collies were specifically bred for herding and it is in their genes. Since you have willingly chosen a herding breed, you need to accept what comes with the whole package. You cannot eliminate their herding instinct, but you can manage it and make the best use of it. However, you should never force to control their herding behavior. Train them gently but firmly, without showing any aggression. Yelling, scolding, or punishing them is totally ineffective because these will not change their innate behavior, but only increase their aggression and stubbornness. Border Collies are also super intelligent. Because of their intelligence, they are considered the undisputed king of the canine's world. The famous canine psychologist and researcher Dr. Stanley Corrin has ranked them the first in the list of intelligent dog breeds. Border Collies have an outstanding ability to learn a new command in less than five repetitions. According to research and experimentation, a Border Collie named Chaser learned the names of around 1,000 objects and can tell apart one from another. The recognition of 1,000 distinct objects is a big thing for a dog to learn, and Chaser even has its own website where all his achievements are mentioned. Because of their smart nature, they are highly trainable. They were initially used and bred for herding purposes, but nowadays they can be used for a variety of purposes, including as a family dog. It is because of their easy trainability, and they are often used as service, rescue, and guide dogs. They often rank higher in competitive sports like agility, fly ball, and sheepdog trials. Border Collie is a breed that aims to please its owner. Their training is challenging for first-time owners. Without proper training techniques, they may outsmart you. This is a very important thing to consider before bringing home a Border Collie. These dogs are not only super intelligent, but also super active and energetic. These herding dogs were supposed to have a lot of stamina and herd all day. Therefore, a Border Collie is not recommended for families who cannot fulfill their high energy demands or have a small house with no playing area. They are workaholics and may not fit everyone's lifestyle. These hyperactive dogs remain happiest when they receive physical as well as mental stimulation. Border Collies are athletic dogs and they need something else besides just regular walks. If Border Collies have no proper mental and physical stimulation, they will quickly become bored and frustrated and will find other ways to release their energy like biting, chewing, and even hurting humans. They are also more prone to chasing moving objects like cars. There are three main conditions for an ideal training session, short, fun, and focused. Border Collies don't need long training sessions. They are known for their outstanding trainability and can learn a new command in less than five repetitions. However, because of their active nature, sometimes they will have a hard time focusing on the training and will be distracted. Young Border Collies have shorter attention spans and you need to train them in short sessions. Train them in a quiet environment where there are few distractions. Focus on teaching them one command in a session. Reward them after the completion of the training session. According to the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior, reward-based training is highly effective and it offers the most advantages. It is also better for human-animal bond, while aversive methods can cause stress in dogs. The Humane Society of the U.S. considers positive reinforcement as a powerful tool, 
The American Kennel Club says it should be the foundation of training. Reward-based training is the most effective way for training a dog. It is a scientifically proven method for a successful training process. Border Collies enjoy learning and they thrive on affection and encouragement. Food is a big motivation and encouragement for them. The use of negative methods should be avoided at all costs. Border Collies are responsive dogs, and if you use negative methods, they could show a counter response by not following your commands and not being cooperative in the training process. Besides, punishment is a cruel and ineffective method and only yields negative results. Socialization is critical for training a dog. It has a big role in the upbringing of a dog and helps them become a confident and well-mannered dog. If your dog is not properly socialized, he will become fearful and nervous around other dogs and humans. Socialization starts in their puppyhood. A puppy needs to learn how to react in different situations. They need to experience different sounds, smells, and sights. Take them to a dog's park, local market, and on car rides. Border Collies are athletic and active dogs, and they are curious to explore their surroundings. The first few months of their lives are considered the prime time for socialization. The secret of success lies in these two things. They are directly related to the owner and have very little to do with the dog. Training a smart dog like a Border Collie requires a full dedication and planning. Oftentimes, the training process is delayed because the owner is not consistent. You also need to be patient in the process. Training is a personal journey for every dog, and sometimes an individual dog will take some extra time and effort. Patience and consistency are the keys to a successful training process. However, in the long run, it is a rewarding experience and totally worth the effort and time.